For this classroom presentation, you're going to hear from uh, the SUM uh, VP of Cohort Development, Melanie Francis, and she's going to talk about academics, and you'll get to see uh, a little bit of what a classroom uh, scenario might look like. She's also going to bring in a professor from SUM, and you'll be able to see that professor and hear from him. This particular presentation was recorded on an iPhone, and so you'll notice that the orientation and the, the size of the screen image is, uh, fits with what you would normally see on an iPhone. So just to make you aware of that during this presentation. It is so nice to have you here um, today. Really great. Uh, let me just see. Pat, in you? Yeah, I've already forgotten. Nick. 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 I'm Joe and he's David. Joe and David, so nice to be here with you. My name is Melanie. I'm the Vice President of Cohort Development with SUM Bible College and Theological Seminary. And um, I, I get the privilege of teaching um, in some in the Gen Ed department at SUM. We've got Dr. Cook that's here with us today. Dr. Cook is um, the chair of our Applied Theology department. I actually get to teach a couple of classes for Dr. Cook in oh. his department. Um, as well, but we've got some great guests that are going to pop in at different times today that are that are um, professors at SUM, and um, a couple of them are chairs of some of our departments. So Dr. Cook does a tremendous job um, chairing that department and helping to pull everything together for the academic piece. So I know that when you were all hearing about SUM, um, I'm sure that you had heard about these online classes and you were trying to kind of picture what an online class was going to look like. And I know that we say it's live online instruction and that it's fully um, participatory, everybody's involved, it's like a virtual classroom. But um, sometimes the way you perceive it, and I do, I'm just gonna be completely honest with you. Um, when, when I was, I don't know, Dr. Cook, I never asked you this question, I should have. I don't know what, what your perception was the first time you were introduced to SUM. But the first time I was introduced to SUM, it was, there was a friend of mine um, in Florida, his name was Jeff Squibbs. They were directing um, a cohort much like this at their church, and he knew that I was a teacher, and he kept saying to me, you gotta check this out, you gotta check this out, you gotta check this out. So um, I, I'm a, a little bit more mature, and so when I was doing my master's degree just a couple of decades ago, I had to take one online class, and some of you um, are too young to know that you used to have to unplug your phone line from your phone and plug it into your computer to get online, and there was a series of terrible sounds and memes that would happen, and then you would finally get online and then something would happen to kick you off. That was my experience with online education. Because I was taking a master's in education, I was required to have this class that was the wave of the future of online education. There was a little text box that came up and everybody had to chat in this little text box. Mm -hmm. It was, and people got bounced off. It was the worst experience of my um, graduate school degree. And so when Jeff Squibbs kept telling me, you have got to check out SUM this online school, I would go home to my husband and say, there is no way I'm having anything to do with that. Online education is terrible. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be starting with this. But then one day he opens up a, um, a class. We weren't using Zoom at the time. We were still using Mega Meeting. But he opens up a class and Dr. Pickens was behind the camera and he's teaching. And I see all the other students that were in class at the same time. And I said, Jeff, it's like a regular classroom. He said, Melanie, I've been trying to tell you this for years. It had been like three or four years that he had been nagging me before I finally said, okay, I'm gonna submit my application, let me get started with SUM. Um, but the, the, what you're gonna find, and I'll let, I'll let Dr. Cook uh, brag a little bit about his, uh, his team, but what you're gonna find is that the way that SUM has put this whole academic piece together, we are able to provide really um, excellent, excellent instruction. Mm -hmm. um, the, the faculty at SUM is, um, they're not, so, so at any college you get brilliant people, right? Brilliant people isn't surprising teaching in a college, but I think what really sets SUM apart is that the people that teach for SUM are not just people who have proven themselves in the academic world, they've also proven themselves in ministry. So you're not just getting people who have um, pursued a doctorate and completed a doctorate degree, you're getting people who did a doctorate because God called them to ministry, 
and they are 100% sold out to make sure that they are raising students um, to be prepared to serve in full-time ministry. And that's, uh, that's, that's who Dr. Cook is and who his team is. So I asked um, him to come today to just kind of show you, get you a little picture of what a classroom um, would look like at, at SUM. So Dr. Cook, that was your probably too long introduction, but I'd love for you to be able to greet them and to just um, be able to show them a little bit of what a class looks like. sharing with you. I'm just going to share a couple things about SUM, about maybe myself, and also just show you a little bit of how maybe the online system will work when you're in the class. Um, uh, I too am attracted to SUM because of its emphasis on ministry. Its emphasis on spirit formation and its emphasis on developing people for ministry. Uh, I teach for five schools, but the one I teach for the most is SUM. Uh, and, and that's why I'm a faculty at, uh, department head at, at this school. Uh, I believe in, in uh, their focus and, and where we're headed. And so, but as an example, based on what uh, Melanie was telling, uh, saying to you, I, I've been in ministry. I just retired out of pastoring. I pastored for 48 and a half years. I know I only look like I'm 35, but I pastored for 48 and a half years. And, uh, um, I've been involved in higher education since 2004, um, but uh, my whole life is building on ministry. That's all I know. And as I'm not, uh, while I'm not pastoring presently and do not plan to do it again, I thought when I left in 2004, I didn't think I would do it again, but for the last seven and a half years, I have been. Uh, because when ministry is in you, it's in you. And, uh, but my goal at this point is to teach for the schools I teach for, train people for ministry, and, uh, and write. And the reason I want to do that is just to give you a little bit of input about myself. You know, I've been married 51 years. Uh, this month coming up, um, three children, uh, 12 grandchildren, one great-grandchild, and, uh, and I'm not ready to retire. Uh, so I'll be teaching for these schools, I'll be writing, and the reason for, that I went into uh, training people for ministry is back in 1999, God spoke to me. And these were the words that he spoke to me. He said, if you live and die, and you fail to put in print what I taught you, and you fail to mentor the next generation, you will have failed in ministry. Mm -hmm. And so I knew right then that my, my lifestyle was gonna change, my focus was gonna change, and so I'm about taking what I have learned through 50 years of ministry and trying to share it with the next generation in a way that helps you understand the principles God has taught me and allow you to use the methods that reach this evolving society. Mm -hmm. And um, so here's what, we, here's what we understand. Principles never change. Principles remain the same. Methods change. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so... I feel it's my responsibility as a professor to instill in you as much as I can and to mentor you in the areas of the principles God's taught me through the years so that you can start at a higher level than I started with. You don't have to go through the same struggles I went through to learn those principles and, and then you can take them and you can apply them to your ministry. So that's just a little bit about who I am. I, I'm, I'm a mentor. Uh, I develop people for ministry. There will be times in my classes as an example, when uh, you know we've got our lecture, we've got the, where we're supposed to get to, but all of a sudden we'll be halfway there and I'll feel it's a mentoring time and the Lord wants me to spend some time there and we'll just spend the time there that we need to spend there. And if I don't get through the lecture, I can pick it up next week. And uh, uh, because, because it's, uh, 
I, I, I'm not about, and I don't think any of our professors are about, are about simply transmitting information. You've got a phone with Google on it. You can get all the information you need. But, uh, tra uh, but, but uh, uh, transformation is what we're all about. So uh, just a little bit about uh, who I am and, and, and why I'm at SUM. And uh, I, I thought it would be uh, beneficial to you if I just showed you a couple things here as to maybe uh, some of the things you would see. Um, and, uh, and, and you can see how this operates. I'm going to share my screen here. And uh, uh, you should be able to see my uh, a syllabus there. You see that on the screen? Is it there? Give me a high sign. No. 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 It's behind. It's the yes? No? No. We got it now. Okay. Uh, you, you, you can see the syllabus. And, uh, and uh, just to show you, I just want to show you that so you can see how we, uh, um, how you can see it on the screen. And we would go over this with you and what the learning outcomes are. And, and there's a uh, uh, course outline for the 11 weeks, uh, what we're going to be dealing with. And this, is a, this particular class is not as intricate as some, so it's not as detailed as some. But I just wanted to show you that you'll see those things on the screen. Uh, and then you might have something like this. Uh, uh, we, we can go ahead and, uh, and, uh, and I can show you uh, how, how we can even show video. And you can get, uh, if there's videos we want to show, uh, this one happens to be a music video, but also uh, teaching or whatever that we can use to discuss from. And uh, let's see, it's very interactive. And uh, uh, we can uh, we we can do just about anything. Uh, one of the things that uh, you you aren't able to see that, correct? And hear it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's just a little bit, uh, just to give you an idea of, of of some of the different things that can happen. You're able to talk to me, I'm able to talk to you, we're able to have interaction. Uh, Melanie was talking about her struggle with moving from the brick and mortar classroom into, into uh, uh, online. I, I, I really struggled, I really struggled. I thought there's no way that this is gonna work. In my first class, I feel sorry for those students. At the moment, I only had six people in the class. Uh, because I was learning the system as well as having to reevaluate my thinking in regard to being right there because I like to see people's eyes. You know, I like to, I like to be right there with them. Um, but not sure exactly how you folks will function as you get started. But uh, so I'm not trying to say this is what will happen, but it's very feasible that not only will you be able to see me on the screen, but you can have your own laptop uh, sitting right there in front of you. And then I would see you on my screen. I, I, would see this, I, I would see the scene I'm seeing now, which is of you in the classroom, but then also I would have another little spot over here where I would see you individually. And, uh, and so, uh, so uh, I, I, I just like interaction. And uh, so I had a struggle with it. And, and I'll tell you, there is a little bit of a learning curve. There will be a learning curve for you. Um, but uh, the, the benefits so far outweigh the struggles. As an example, it's very possible you will have somebody uh, in some of your classes the first year uh, from Ghana and uh, the Philippines and uh, uh, India, uh, Pakistan, uh, Ethiopia, uh, just different places where we have cohorts and uh, you're all in class together and as an example, as I, if, if, let's say I'm teaching a, a class on church administration, and um, we're able to get perspectives from different countries, people that minister in different countries, and and uh, it, it's it's just a, an excellent uh, system. So um, I, I don't really have anything else further to say. Anybody have questions for me? I'd be happy to take them. Students take tests and then you uh, submit assignments. Oh, Dr. Cobb, you know, typical how, class. Dr. Cobb, how do students how do students take tests and submit assignments? No one. 
Oh, can you not hear us? He can't hear us. Um, why can't you? I can hear you, but not very well. Oh, okay. Um, how do students take tests and submit assignments? I'm sorry, go right one more time. How do students take tests and submit assignments? Oh, okay. How do students take a test and submit assignments? Well, that depends upon the instructor. There are different ways of doing it. Um, uh, many of the instructors uh, set up quizzes or tests right in uh, right in Canvas. I don't know, uh, Melanie, have you talked to them about Canvas yet? Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go into it, but I'm sure that that will become, there's a, another software that you use where you upload your assignments, etc. And some professors will develop the exam right there on um, uh, Canvas, which will be a timed exam, and uh, you'll be able to do it there, and, and then they, uh, they grade it. Other professors, depending upon the class and depending upon the nature of the class, uh, might have uh, an assignment, uh, a, a test where, where you just uh, uh, fill out your answers on a Word document and, and, and upload them. Uh, with the uh, attestation as a, a person of integrity, then you're you're going by the rules and the regulations. So there's just different ways of doing it. Uh, more and more, we're getting to where it's all going to be on on um, uh, on Canvas, uh, where, where you just do it right there. But th th there's just different ways. It depends upon the professor, and it depends upon the nature of the class. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Dr. Cook. I can show you Canvas once we're done. Um, Anything else? Cook. Can I ask you one thing, Dr. Cook? I, I might be, can you hear me? I, might I, can, be, I can hear you. I'm going to have to work a little bit on the sound eventually. Yes. You know. Yeah, I, I'm not sure why that's happening. I'll, we'll troubleshoot that. Um, what, what would you say to someone who is looking, is trying to decide whether or not they should enter a degree program? Or just do like a district school of ministry type training. And I guess I should, um, I'm, I'm going to give you a second to think about that, although I think you've probably thought a lot about that. Let me just um, uh, bring you up to speed with who Dr. Cook is. Dr. Cook also oversees, um, the, uh, he runs a school of ministry as well for, for credentialing inside his district. So he is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Okay, sure. I, uh, as, as Melanie said, I, I have a school that I uh, uh, use and, and help people who just want credentials. They are not looking for a degree. They're just looking for credentials. There's a number of reasons. There's a number of students like that. Uh, one classification is somebody who already has a degree and they don't need another one, but they want the credentials in order to minister. Another uh, uh, situation is somebody may be called to ministry later in life and they have seven kids and they can't you know invest in uh, a credited degree or whatever so there is a niche for people like that my suggestion is if there's any way for you to get the degree you're always better to get the degree uh, than to just get the classes for credentialing the reason I have the school I have is for those who can't for some reason or who do not need it for some reason, but they do have the, the desire in their heart to minister and the call of God to minister. Uh, and, and so I want to minister to that group of people. But I, before I will enroll anybody, I set them down and I talk to them about degree programs because I teach, as I said, for different schools. And, uh, and that uh, if a degree program will fit them better or work better for them, I always encourage them to go into the program um, but I do uh, 
have this other for those who either can't or don't need it because of another degree, whatever. Uh, so if that's where you are, uh, if, if, if there's any way at your stage in life that you can go ahead and get the degree, I would encourage you to do so. Because uh, if I have, let's say I have a position open and I have uh, three people that uh, uh, are applying for it and they're all equal as far as character and credibility and competency. I'm probably going to go with the one who invested themselves more deeply. Does, does that make sense? Uh, it doesn't mean they're any better. It just means they invested themselves more deeply. If, if, they're, if, if across the board they're the same. Uh, uh, granted, I say that and I have to bounce back and say, unless God tells me to go the other way. But, but you know what I'm saying. I'm, not, I'm looking at apples to apples. Uh, I would encourage everybody that can to go ahead and get the degree. And issue is a great place to do it because the cost of the degree at issue is much less than it is at many of the other schools. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Dr. Cook, thank you so much. I so appreciate your time. We so appreciate yes. you being here today. Really, it's it's uh, made a difference, and everything that you said was so encouraging and so helpful. So, thank you for being here. Sure, and, and the only thing I would say from my standpoint uh, for the administration there is uh, it, it, tweak it a little bit for the sound because it is really hard for me to hear your sound. We'll work on that. And that's just a work in progress, just just, but just so you're aware. Mm -hmm. So it's been good to be with you. You guys have a great day, and uh, I hope to have you in my classes one day very soon. God bless you. Um, so the syllabus that Dr. Cook pulled up is a first year, first trimester, uh, first year, second trimester class, um, five-fold ministry. That's one of our required courses that every student takes at SU. I'm giving them the introduction to those five, the, the five-fold ministry. Um, I'll show you Canvas in a minute if we still have a minute. I don't know if we need to move. Um, are we okay? Okay, I'll show you Canvas, which is our learning management software. That's what Dr. Cook was talking about, where we um, submit assignments, take um, take exams, um, pull all the files and documents and whatever you need from the course. I'm going to pull up a third year, um, a third year, third trimester class, and you can take a look at what that is. But when I pull it up, I want you to remember it's a third year, third trimester class. I'm saying that because you, it might be overwhelming when you see everything that's in the course, um, resource-wise, not assignment-wise. Um, let me also just say before I do that, um, as uh, Dr. Cook uh, mentioned the affordability of SUM. That is one of our, our four pillars and one really of the assets, I believe, in attending SUM. So I just want to take a minute and talk to you about that before I show you the Canvas piece. Um, you know, our, our program is set up intentionally to keep costs as low as possible because the heart behind SUM is getting students into ministry debt-free. Um, Education is, is very important. It's important to take that time to train yourself, um, not just in academics, but also that, that ministry preparation season. Even Paul pulled away and had to go through a, a reorientation of his thought process, of his, his, his way of worship. Um, you know, Paul, Paul knew worship from a, a Jewish background. He knew that animals needed to be killed and that the law needed to be fulfilled. And so God needed to completely readjust that. Like he needed a whole season of, of radical readjustment. And uh, three years is, is much shorter <laughs> than what Paul went through, um, but we still need that kind of time for God to transform our thinking um, in, that, in that whole educational piece. But um, SUM believes in that, but they also, we also believe that we need to make sure that it is practically affordable for people. So it is, um, I'm saying it is, right? I, I, I don't think anybody would really debate with me. It is a tragedy that we graduate students with ministry degrees and ask them to take churches and be bi bivocational and pay off $100,000 of school loans in the process. Um, SUM won't let you do that. You just can't. It can't happen in SUM. Our, uh, our degree program, our bachelor's program is set up so that you can finish the entire bachelor's degree in three years instead of four. So that cuts one full year off. The cost of the entire three-year bachelor's degree is just under $30,000. So for any of you who know anything about the cost of degrees, 
um, most Bible colleges, Bible colleges, are 30 plus. They're averaging 34, 36, 37, and more per year. Per year. I know that because I have two children. One's just finished, and one's still in school. I know the cost of education. That's, that's Bible college. Um, and many of you know that you know private colleges are just astronomical, and public education isn't cheap anymore either. It just really honestly isn't to even get a secular degree. But to try to ask somebody to minister with $100,000 of debt is ridiculous. Um, and it's, it's, it's an unfair burden to place on the next generation of ministers. So as you was saying, hey, we want to make this available to people. We want to make it available for an affordable cost. But then on top of that, and I believe that this is beautiful, and you can keep just praying that God will allow the favor to continue, um, our, the U.S. government will still pay Pell Grants to students that are seeking a Bible college education. We're a Bible college and only a Bible college. SUM does nothing but train people for ministry. I mean, we'll train you for any ministry you feel called to. <laughs> but all we do is train people for ministry. And we, um, because of our accreditation, we still qualify for federal financial aid. So you can, if you qualify for a Pell Grant, grants don't get paid back. You can take that money from Uncle Sam. It goes right on your school bill. A full Pell Grant um, for next school year is $6,100. So if you qualify, of course it's income based, right? But if you qualify, two thirds of your school can be paid by Uncle Sam. And you have a remaining one third that we encourage our students to work and pay off. If you have to take student loans at that point, you're talking $3,000 a year in student loans. So you can graduate with under $10,000 in loan debt. The goal is for you to pay it off as you go so that you graduate with no school debt. We'd rather you graduate with no school debt. Personally, I've told my, my own personal children, I have four of them, I've told my own personal children um, a car and not a house. Your education is worth a car and not a house. If you want um, to graduate school and you want to have a car loan when you come out, I will support that. Because then you're gonna have to go buy a used jalopy for $1,000 and then pay off your loans before you can buy the car that you want. Right. But I will not support you buying, having a house to pay off. Because it's not okay for you to live in a one bedroom apartment for the, until your kids are in high school. <laughs> While you're paying off your school bill, you need to uh, make sure that you invest in your best wisely. And I know when you're just kind of making those decisions starting out, we're push, we push um, our young people to go to where we call the best, you know, the best schools. Um, sometimes the best schools are the schools that are gonna give you that education that's coming right from your perspective that you need for the cost um, that's gonna fit with your future ministry lifestyle. The other, um, the other piece is we've talked about academic excellence. I think it's clear after meeting with Dr. Cook that we have um, an excellent academic program. We've talked about financial accountability. You need to understand that our other two non-negotiable pillars at SUM holds the whole program up are personal mentorship and practical hands-on ministry. From day one, when you enter your classes at SUM, when you start class here at IFCA Bible College right here um, with Pastor Allen and Pastor Dave, you are going to be put right into hands-on practical ministry. You'll have two practicums per trimester. They'll tailor the practicums for what you need, but you're gonna get exposed to background in all kinds of areas of ministry. It's just gonna prepare you, that hands-on piece. Um, and you'll be assigned a personal mentor that's gonna walk with you through the process. So they're not just gonna walk you through the process of did you do that assignment, but they will. But they're also gonna walk you through the process of how are you with Jesus right now? What's going on in your personal life? What's going on in your relationships? How is it with your husband? How is it with your parents? How is it with your kids? Where are you having difficulties? How is it going with your personal life? How's your stress level? How's your physical health? I can see that you look like you're tired and things aren't going well. Are you, are you sleeping? Are you eating right? Are you taking care of your physical body? This is the temple that the Holy Spirit is trying to dwell in. And sometimes we make it awfully uncomfortable for him to dwell in this personal temple, but that's all another topic. You're gonna get um, that balanced approach. You're gonna get those four pillars at SUM. That's who we are. That's what comes out of, of, of every one of our cohorts and every one of our programs. So I just wanna make sure you understand that, that that's who we are um, as you're walking into that. If you give me a minute, I'll pull up Canvas, but um, I'm just gonna log into my Canvas. But while I'm, while I'm doing that, 
I would love to hear if you have any questions. And I know I have my back to you, so it's rude, so I apologize, but I can take Melanie, um, if you don't mind, I I'm real honored to have Pastor Marino and Sister Mary here with mm -hmm. us uh, in, in our time together. And, and we were able to share with Pastor that um, we had met you, Melanie, and that oh. you, you had some uh, CCNA roots. I do. So, I do uh, have some CCNA since roots. Since Pastor and Mary are here, <laughs> let them know that because they, they probably know some people that you know. Probably. Um, let me show you campus and then I'll give you a little bit of my background and it, it kind of it ties into my ministry call honestly but this is this is if you've ever seen learning management software there's uh, Moodle and Blackboard and other learning management software our um, Amadou is canvas that we use and what you'll see um, is that right, right at the top of every class this is the same in every class you click here to get into zoom so when you log into your canvas you click here to get into zoom but then you'll see that there's resources. This class has a lot of resources because this is a this is a, a third year, third trimester class. So this is students that are graduating, right? Um, but there's resources in the course. But as we scroll down, um, I'll show you there's places for assignments. There's PowerPoints that are in here. Um, but there's places for assignments. You won't see, it's not a student view, but if you click in here, there'll be a submit button. Um, where it allows me to publish and unpublish. It allows you as a student, this is a class I'm teaching this spring, it allows you as a student to submit. So it would say submit right here, and you would submit to that particular assignment right here. Um, so that kind of shows you <coughs> shows you what, what that looks like. Where's, where's the assignment section? Um, so that might be something that's just a little bit for you to get a look at. You can click around in Canvas and see all sorts of things, but and there's a lot of fun stuff in Canvas, but that's how you submit your assignments. I don't have a quiz set up in this particular course, but quizzes happen the same way. They actually give you a little picture of a rocket ship, <laughs> and you click into your quiz, you open it up, and you take it. Um, so that's that's what that looks like, so you can have a, have a picture of that. Um, are there questions on this? And then I'll give you my CCNA background. Um, so I, I um, am fourth generation Pentecostal. I just had to count to make sure that I was getting the right, <laughs> the generations right. Um, my family is obviously Italian. I think you can look at me. Well, I think Italians could look at me and know that I'm obviously Italian. Non-Italians look at me and they're super confused um, you know, because they only know I Italians and so they have a real hard time <laughs> recognizing someone who's Italian. But my family um, has a long history and long connection to the CCNA church um, in, uh, on Long Island in East Patchogue on Gazzola Drive. I think it's Columbus, Columbus and Gazzola there. Um, pastor uh, Josh and Donnie Von Ventry are the pastors there mm -hmm. right now. Um, but we grew up with uh, the Folios. The Folios were our pastors for e forever. My, my family um, is the Mangonias. That's my, my mom's family. The Mangonias were there for forever. They're all still there still there. Everybody's still there. Um, it's Journey Church now, but it was Christian Assembly of East Pacho forever. But um, that was the first place that someone recognized my call to ministry. For the longest time, I thought someone recognized my call to ministry. And so they gave me the opportunity at 16 years old to teach fourth grade boys. Now you already know when I said that, that they just needed a fourth grade boy teacher and I was a warm body willing and they put me in the classroom. But to me, I thought, oh, they recognized my call to ministry because <laughs> I was 16 and called to ministry. So I thought they recognized my call to ministry and wanted to give me an opportunity to serve. God did. <laughs> and I taught those fourth grade boys and man, are fourth grade boys tough. They broke me into teaching and to ministry. But, um, Seriously, I was called to ministry at a, um, a, a it was a CCNA um, convention. It was in, they used to do them in Crystal City. Uh, in the, yes, yes, and, and I was I was there. So we went every year to youth convention and to um, the the um, convention in the national convention. 
and uh, someone was preaching and there was an offering that was being taken that I didn't understand and people were giving large sums of money and I was 16 and I knew I didn't have any money. But I was seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I, this is probably too much information but I'll give it to you anyway. I was uh, quite irritated that all of my friends were getting baptized in the Holy Spirit and I wasn't. I don't know if I shared this part with you. Everybody was getting baptized in the Holy Spirit and I wasn't. And I'm like, excuse me, I'm the one living for Jesus. <laughs> do you know what that one's doing? And do you know what that one's doing? And do you know what that one's doing? I'm like, I love Jesus. And I'm like, I'm like reading my Bible. I'm praying. I'm seeing God. I'm like, I'm like pure. And like, I'm trying to do the right things. Obviously, I wasn't pure in judging other people. Um, but in that process, God said, um, just seek me. I was like, okay. And so I started to really seek God. And when I really started to seek God, the next thing I knew, God was God said to me, um, will you go? I'm like, yeah, I'll go. Where am I supposed to go? Will you, will, you, will you go anywhere I send you? Will you do anything that I ask you to do? And I had that experience like the prophet, right? And I said, God, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. Send me. I'm here. He said, Nellie, how will they know if nobody's going? I said, I'm ready, I'm available. But then for me, my background was after that, <laughs> I encountered all kinds of, you're a woman. God doesn't call women like that. And so I was kind of put back in my place, but I knew what God had called me. My, my grandfather to this day says, I don't believe in women in ministry, although he invited me to preach in his pulpit before he retired. <laughs> but, but, he will still say to any gathering, anybody who listened to him, I don't believe in women in ministry, and I go, it's okay, Grandpa, look in front of me, it's okay, Grandpa, I'm still your heritage. I'm your heritage, this is what God gave you, I get to carry on the, uh, the passion of the ministry that God placed in you. Uh, but, you know, over the years, of course, God gave me the opportunity to, to develop that, and, and now we're just releasing people into ministry. Um, I, I, I so value the time that I had being a dean taught to seek God. So value that because when you seek God, He answers, and when you make yourself available, um, He calls you. And if you are willing to go, He sends you. I thought I was being called to Africa. Oh boy. Because <laughs> I had no idea. They kept bringing those African missionaries in, right? but obviously called me here. But um, it was, it's great to have you all here. Really great to have you all here. And for the rest of you, um, I honor the call of God on your life, mm -hmm. and um, SUM exists to prepare you for that call. Mm -hmm. Don't cut your vision short. Don't cu cut your opportunity short. Don't cut how God can use you short by not preparing. So, um, you know, my call to you, my charge to you is to take the three years and ask to let God do what he does best, because he will open doors that you never could have imagined. Never could have imagined. The call at that moment for me was so much better than the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That came later, but the call was foundational. And I'm so glad that God made me wait. Yeah, He made me wait.